to the Corinthians, amen. First Corinthians, the 15th chapter. As most of you know, we are ending our small group Bible study in First Corinthians this week, and we just finished the 15th chapter, and we'll be doing going into the 16th chapter this week. So I felt it fitting that I might bring a message from the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. And we're, it's already been read in your hearing in its context uh, of 1 Corinthians 50 through 58, but I just want to lift up that 58th verse to lead us into our lesson. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to teach a little bit today. All right. Verse 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Mm -hmm. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain Amen. in the Lord. That's right. Amen? Amen. Your labor is not in vain in, in the Lord. You know, we've got some good workers here at Mount Carmel. Uh, you can tell that because we only have we only have a few folk. Amen? Amen. All right. Other, well, we don't have a lot of folk, but there's a lot of work that gets done. 
And that means that somebody's working hard. Amen? Amen. Because everybody don't work. Some folk Amen. just enjoy the fruits of the labor. Amen? Amen. But I just want to let you know today that your labor is not in vain. Amen. Amen. Your labor is not in vain. Pray with me, Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask you right now to build up the hearts and minds uh, of the leaders and the those that are in ministry in this in this section of the vineyard. Father, I ask right now that you touch the hearts and minds of those that have not yet decided to serve. Lord, I ask you to take us, Lord, and embed your message of hope within our heart. Father God, right now, I ask you to open our minds to receive this message that you have given to your people through your servant. Uh, Father God, I ask you to take me and to hide me behind the shadow of the cross that they might not see me, but Christ in me. Lord, bless somebody's soul today. Lord, cleanse and make them whole in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. I do pray. Amen. 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 Deacon uh, 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 Black, can you move this microphone for me, please? Thank you. Amen. Your labor, thank you, brother. Your labor is not in vain. Your labor is not in vain. You know, every time uh, 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 you do something, especially if you do it for someone else, or you do it for an organization, or you do it for a company. Uh, most of us, even though we may say that we don't want it, we're looking for some show of appreciation. Amen. 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 Sometimes you do things, and especially when you do things in ministry, uh, uh, you can be tempted to feel unappreciated. And as a matter of fact, the higher that you go in ministry, uh, the more that you do in ministry, uh, you are even more susceptible to feeling unappreciated. Amen. The usher that stands at the door and gives out bulletin usually receives 10 uh, to hundreds of thank yous a day every time she gives someone a piece of paper. Amen. Uh, the musicians and the uh, praise team that sing our songs uh, when they uh, have completed uh, their song, they usually get a round of applause. But as you go higher in ministry, much of what you do goes unseen. Uh, no one sees you uh, working and no one sees you doing what it is that you're doing. And there are a lot of folk that work hard on a daily basis, but they never receive any type of indication that their work is appreciated. Now, I'm not saying that uh, uh, everybody that does anything uh, wants a, a trophy or plaque to put on the wall even though some folk feel that they do need a plaque or a trophy to put on the wall uh, if they give a dollar to the church or uh, if they do something in the church. But most folk are not looking for a plaque or, or a trophy. And they're not looking to be featured in a full-page ad uh, in the newspaper. And sometimes just a simple thank you would do the trick. Somebody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Just a simple thank you from the person that you work for uh, uh, many times will do the trick. Employers, they, they, they often overlook this thing because they feel like, hell, I, 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 I mean, I'm paying you. Why, <laughs> <laughs> yep. well, I got to thank you too. 
Amen? And many of them take their workers for granted. Mm -hmm. And they reduce their workers to little more than just paid labor. All right, all right. With no feelings. Uh, and you work and you feel like you could be terminated at a moment's notice. Amen? Amen. And every now and then we get folk that come into the church and they have that same attitude. It creeps into the church and a lot of people are dedicated workers in the church and they may feel that their contribution to the church or the church's ministry is overlooked or unappreciated. Well, in my experience uh, in the church and in leadership in the church, I've learned the value of a simple thank you. Amen. I've learned the value of showing a sign of gratitude that will allow church volunteers to know that the work that they're doing has been noticed, that the work that they're doing is appreciated. Now, who are these laborers? Who are these workers? Well, they're the folk that come in on Sunday morning early and open the church and stay up making sure that the Sunday school is all set up for the folk that come in and just sit down. These are the folk that work with youth and that work with children, no matter how bad they are. Uh, on Sundays. Mm -hmm. These are the folk that come in when nobody's here and vacuum the floor, clean the bathroom. You don't think about it being clean, but you sure would complain about it if it was not. Amen. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Amen. You don't think about cleaning it or, or how it gets clean, but you sure would notice if it wasn't clean. Amen. 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 These are the musicians that take songs that, that, that people want to hear and, and, and spend hours and hours practicing to get it in the right key. To make sure that, that, that it sounds right. Amen. Amen. And you know, nowadays we hear all this stuff on the radio and we want the music in our church to sound like what we hear on the radio. You understand what I'm talking about? Uh, these are the musicians that do that. These are the ushers that stand at the door while everybody else is seated. These are the trustees that stay after everyone is gone and make sure that, that the, the, the financial and the worldly needs of the church are met and are in order. Amen. These are the deacons that, that, that serve in whatever capacity that they're needed. Amen. These are the folk that cook the food that everybody comes out and eats. These are the folk that offer rides to folk that don't have cars and, and bring folk to church and bring folk to Bible study and Amen. bring you, somebody ought to know what I'm talking about. Amen. The stuff that nobody sees, these are the people that do this. Amen. I mean, they do all kinds of unseen things and Amen. nevertheless, they're valuable to the church. The church wouldn't be what it is if it wasn't for these people. You know, once a year, you know, we often recognize pastors and, you know, we even have anniversaries for uh, musicians and, and choirs and, and great days of appreciation. But what about the countless other people that work in the church that are so equally important? What about the folk that nobody even knows what they do in the church? Amen. But they enjoy uh, the things that that they take care of every day when they come to the church. The church in some small way ought to be able to show love to some volunteers as well. Amen. 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 There ought to be some way that we can honor and show gratitude to the volunteers of the church as well. Now, now when you go out into the world, they'll char they characterize a, a, a worker with terms uh, that they speak about uh, like patronizing terms, you know, a common laborer, uh, an employee, a manual laborer. And, 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 and you know, we, we try to celebrate these workers at least once a year. 
You know, at the beginning of the summer, we, we want to celebrate them by having Labor Day. A lot of folk don't know where it came from, but that was an effort to celebrate the workers, the, 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 the regular uh, menial workers, if you would, in the country. See, there, there was a time when there was no uh, organized unions, and, and the man that hired you could do whatever he wanted to do to you. He can make you work 60 hours a day, like most people did. But when unions came along uh, back in around 1938, uh, they, 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 they protected folk. They gave a minimum wage to folk. I'm, excuse me, they protected folk. They protected the children of folk. And in, in 1955, 55% of Americans had unions. By 1995, the number had decreased to like 15%. Unions were going by the wayside, and employers were, uh, again, beginning to get the feeling that they can do whatever they want to do to you. Amen? Amen. If you gain a couple pounds, they don't want you working in their restaurant no more, so they just fire you. Somebody know what I'm talking about? Amen. Amen. They, they encourage you to wear things that, are, uh, that you don't want to wear. Amen? They, 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 don't, they don't threaten you, but they let you know in no uncertain terms that if you don't put in this extra hours of work, we might not need you around here anymore. Amen? Right. Amen. Only when folk organize do they get a fair share in this world. Amen? Companies started work breaking down labor unions and started... Uh, uh, discouraging employees from being members in labor unions, but in many states, they, they, they pass these, these right-to-work laws, mostly Republican states, amen? amen, that that allowed you to work with the benefits of a contract, but without actually having a contract. The goal was to make sure that you didn't join any unions. Well, once a year is the time when we celebrate that, amen? But every day is Labor Day in the amen. sight of God. See, see, he, see, he's always aware of the work that you're doing. I want you to know that he always knows uh, what you're doing and where you're doing it and how much you love to doing it. Doing it. When you turn on the lights of the church and nobody else is here, trust me, God is here. Ah, uh, when you're doing something that nobody's nobody acknowledges, believe me, God acknowledges you. Are simply sending up your timber Amen. every day. Now look, I, I'm not going to keep you long because I know we got to come back, but I just want to do a little teaching today. The text here uh, focuses on Paul. And as he gives some words of encouragement to the people that work in the master's vineyard. See, the intent of the text is reflected in six words. Amen? Amen. The first word is steadfast. Steadfast. Uh-huh, steadfast. It said, be steadfast. Amen? Amen. Hedraios is the Greek word. And, 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 and this word, uh, it comes from a word that means to sit. Uh, it means sitting or sedentary or, or, or by, by, by extension, it means firm, immovable, steadfast. Amen? Amen? In the context that Paul is talking about, the word means simply to take a strong stance for something. Mm -hmm. Stand up for what you believe in. All of us, if you're going to work for the Lord, you need to position yourself to stand strong against the tempts of the devil. Amen. To keep you from being in Christian service. Steadfast means to be firm in your faith. To be firm in your Christian walk. Then he used the word unmovable. Listen, if you're going to do this thing, you've got to be unmovable. Amen? Amen. And at, at in Ectos is the Greek word. Amen. And it means to not be moved from its place. To be unmovable. It's a metaphor. It means to be firmly persistent. To keep on doing what you're doing. Some folk can be knocked off stride by anything. You say one word to them and, 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 and they want to they wanna give up. You don't say one word to them and they want to give up. You got to be unmovable. The song, the song said, I shall not be moved. Some folk think that to mean that I shall not be moved from this seat. 
<laughs> I shall not be moved from this pew. I shall not do anything that makes me have to do anything other than come to church on Sunday morning. Amen. But that's not what it means. It means to be unmovable, that nothing can move you out of the job that God has given you. The Lord has assigned you a job, and nothing is going to keep you from doing it. Nothing that anybody says, nothing that anybody does, whether they want to go or not, I'm going. Whether they want to serve or not, I'm going to serve. You can't be persuaded to quit. You can't be persuaded to throw in the towel. You put your hands to the gospel plow, and I don't care what happens, you're going to keep on going and see what the end is all going right, to be. All right, all right, all right. And then he said, always abounding. What does that mean? Persisio is the Greek word, and it, it literally means to exceed a fixed number or measure to be left over and above a certain number or measure. Furthermore, it means to overflow or to uh, be abundantly furnished with more than you need. Affluence. To excel or exceed. Y'all getting me? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And this word is used uh, before. The same Greek word is used when, and when, they, when they talked about the feeding of the 5,000. Y'all remember that? Uh -huh. In Matthew, when they talked about the feeding of the 5,000, after everyone had ate and everyone was fed, uh, there were leftovers, there was abundance, there were things left over. That's where they got the same, they, that, that word is translated from the same word. It exceeded what they expected. It's also used when they talk about wealth. Jesus said a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Amen? Amen? That's Luke 12 and 15. So, in our text, uh, the Lord God should be the best Amen. that we can do for him. Amen? Amen. When, we, when we're doing things for the Lord, we should give him 100%. We should not be satisfied with just getting by. I'm just going to do enough to get by. But we should strive to abound. We should be abounding in the work of the Lord. We should be doing more work than we expected to do. Amen. We, should be, we should be in more ministries than... Look, we ask you to be in one ministry. Well, look, you should be abounding. You should be going far beyond that. You should be looking to start new ministries. You should be looking to do great things for the Lord. Amen. You should be always abounding. Amen. Amen. I, I wish somebody would hear me today. Yes. Yes. Quiet, Pastor. Then work and labor. He said always abounding in the work or the labor of the Lord. That's the Greek word or God. And it means business or employment uh, that which one is occupied Amen. or it may refer to what is being done Amen. the product that you're making the things that you're producing the things that you're accomplishing with your hands say your art or all your, right, your industry right. or or even with working with your mind it could be an act or a deed or work for the lord is our job amen, amen? Our work for the Lord is our job. That's our occupation in his kingdom. And something that we actually do that is required by his call. See, the Lord has called you to work. Make no mistake about it. Amen. It's all right to, to, to come in and, and praise and to clap your hands. And, 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 and I know you, you give, give a dollar or two here and there, but the Lord has called you to work. Somebody ought to hear me today. I can't even get an amen nowhere. Amen. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Amen. It has a description. Somebody asks you, what do you do for the Lord? It ought to have a description. All I hear is a siren outside. <laughs> 
Some of us, uh, if someone asked us, well, what do you do for the Lord? What do you do when the Lord kingdoms you? Uh, amen? If they asked you what do you do for the state, you'd be, you'd be able to say it right off the top of your head. You wouldn't even have to think about it. If they asked you what you did down at that factory, you'd be able to say it right off the top. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a part fitter. Amen? You'd be able to say it. If somebody asked you what do you do for the kingdom in the kingdom of the Lord, you ought to have a description. Amen. 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 And I'm not talking about a title. All right. All right. All right. I'm talking about a description. Anybody can say I'm a deacon. Right. Amen. 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 And trust me, you got some folks saying they're deacons that are really not, but I ain't going to go into that right now. That's a different sermon. Amen. Amen. Anybody can say that they're a pastor. But there's some folk that that saying they pastors that really not. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen. Amen. Listen, your work ought to be describable. Labor is the word kopas. It's found 20 times in the New Testament. And it refers not, it's talking about not so much hard work, but the weariness that comes with work. Your labor, it, it, the weariness, like, 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 you know, when they say she's in labor, they know she's going to be tired. Amen. Uh, she's going to be tired. Amen. But, but the labor is not in vain. And in another sense, it can mean trouble or intense labor united with trouble and toil. In 1 Thessalonians 1 and 3, it's the word used in the expression labor of love. It takes work, but I just love it. Amen? Amen. See, you should be willing to give your time. You should be willing to give your energy. You should be willing to give your service to the Lord. Amen. So that you can do a good job in his service. Amen. While some might say, you know, you, you, you don't have to go through all that trouble. I don't know about you, but I want to go through some trouble for the Lord. I want to have some aggravation for the Lord. Amen. I, 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 I want to be going through something. Listen, I go through aggravation uh, uh, for my employer. I go there every day and get aggravated. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying today. Every single day I go in there, rain, shine. I, I get out early in the morning, dig my car out just to get there to be aggravated. I should be willing. I should want to have some aggravation right. for the Lord. Amen. Then he used the word vain. Kios in yeah, Greek. Yeah. Vain means empty or devoid of truth. It's used to describe places. And it's used to describe uh, even uh, 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 inanimate things. Amen. That don't have anything in them. You know. Or it can be a man, a man who are empty-handed or come without a gift. But metaphorically, it means destitute of spiritual wealth. Amen. Your labor is not destitute of spiritual wealth. Mm -hmm. Or acts. Your acts don't result in nothing. They're not vain. They're not fruitless. They're not without effort. They have a purpose. They're not senseless. They're not foolish. See, when we work for the Lord, we our work will never prove to be empty. Payday is coming. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Even though at times it might look like we're not making any headway. You don't see any new people coming in, but you're steady working and you're steady doing what you need to do. You need to be encouraged and know that the smallest job in the church are important Amen. and valuable to building this kingdom. We talked about it on Friday. Colossians 1, 28 and 29 says, labor according to his power. I'm just trying to teach today. That's right. See, see, God's work is done Every time you pray for somebody, you're doing the work of the Lord. 
when you call somebody on the phone or send somebody a note of encouragement, you're doing the work of the Lord. Right. It's the labor of the Lord when you teach a child. It's the labor of the Lord when you teach a young person. It's the labor of the Lord when you teach another adult. And when you paint the wall in the bathroom, that's a labor for the Lord. When you play an instrument, that's a labor for the Lord. When you sing a song, that's a labor for the Lord. It takes work. When you when you when you come out to meetings, that's a labor for the Lord. When you when you count the offering, that's a labor for the for the Lord that you brought and laid at his feet. I hope somebody would hear me today. But brothers and sisters, I, I told you I wasn't gonna be long. But I just want to talk about one more word that I skipped over in the text. And it may be the most important word in the text. And that word is therefore. Yes. See, that word therefore refers back to what was already written before. Uh, therefore points to the previously mentioned reward that you're going to get for your Christian service. See, therefore points to the great reward that God has for those that trust him. Therefore, reminds us that God has a reward and a place for those who labor in the kingdom. See, I don't know about you, but I'm working for my therefore. See, 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 every now and then folk think because you get a couple dollars that you're working for those couple dollars. But that couple dollars ain't nothing but a token. Yeah. I'm working for my therefore. Uh, there's a lot of power in the therefore. Because the word of God says in Psalms 1 and 5, Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. All right. Luke 6 and 36 says, Be ye therefore merciful. As your father also is merciful. Luke 12 and 40 says, Be ye ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when uh -huh. ye think not. Uh -huh. Romans 14 and 19 says, Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Right. Second Thessalonians 2 and 15 says, Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or by our epistle. The reward for your labor is promised in the therefore. In heaven, the place of the therefore, yeah. there's no more loss. In heaven, the place of the therefore, there's no more hatred. In heaven, the place of the therefore, there's no more sadness, but only gladness. In heaven, the place of the therefore, there's no more weakness, because all there is is strength there. It's a place that was paid for on Calvary right. with the blood of the blessed Lamb. Yeah. He died on Calvary on an old rugged cross. Yeah. But early Sunday morning, yeah. got up with all power yeah. in his hands. Therefore, yeah. let not your heart be troubled. Yeah. If you believe in God, yeah. believe also in me. In my Father's yeah. house many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, come and go with me to my father's house. I got a home up there for all my labors. Every day of my life, when I pray, I'm sending up my timber. Every day, when I praise, I'm sending up my timber. Therefore, therefore, I'm working on therefore. I'm preaching on therefore. I've cried on therefore. I've sung on therefore. I've played on therefore. I cleaned the church on therefore. I preached on therefore. I shoveled the snow on therefore. One of these mornings, it won't be long. You gonna look for me and I'll be gone. 
When they ask you, where did he go? Tell him he went up on his death for. Tell him he's up there on his death for. Tell him, tell him, I got Jesus on my death for. Ain't he all right? Ain't God all right? Ain't you glad you got a death for? Ain't you glad this ain't it? Ain't you glad? Hallelujah. This corruptible gonna be turned into incorruptible. I'm gonna see grandmother again. I'm gonna see old granddaddy again. Ain't you glad you got a there for? Hallelujah. Ain't God all right? Hallelujah. If I didn't have a there for, I wouldn't be able to see my son again. But I'm glad I got a there for that's gonna let me hold him one more time. I'm glad I got a there for that's gonna let me see old grandmama one more time. Ain't God all right? Hallelujah. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Therefore, you get everything that came before that therefore. Ain't God all right? church are open. I just want to pray for you today. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you so much for what you've done for us. Now, Lord, I ask if you would just give us a heart to continue to work for you, continue to do for you, continue to lift up your name, continue to work in your vineyard, Lord. Lord, make us steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Because I know today my work's not in vain, Lord. I know I'm working for something. I know I'm on my way somewhere. I know you're going to make a way for me. Hallelujah. Bless them now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Listen, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what eyes have seen and for what our ears have heard. Father, right now, bless each soul that's represented here. May the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit may it continue to rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us henceforth now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen and amen. amen.